I'm going to have to make a video. <laughs> Dude, there's like 27 allergens in this. <laughs> That's what it says. Um, so, Calorie Mate not only makes like little bars of what look like dog food. So it's just like a cookie, you know, um, of calories. And that's a really dry. You would never serve this to a guest like, oh, you know, you've come to my house and <laughs> I want you to have something delicious. This is stay alive stuff. That's all it is. God, it's really dry. It's like eating chalk. I also saw this in a vending machine. They're now making drinks. What? Okay, so we're, we're gonna try this out. There are two different flavors that they had. One was fruit mix, and I will tell you right now that the fruits bar is the worst. It tastes gross. So I did not get that. I decided to get the uh, Cafe Au Lait. The tiny cans have a more like, girthy opening sound. It's really like getting in there. It smells a bit like um, Lucky Charms, like if you just put your head in the bag. The brown bits or the other bit? The, the collective bits. <laughs> it's kind of cafe au lait plus salt. Oh god. <laughs> it's, it's okay. I kind of like it. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, this is all right. But it's not what anybody thinks it's gonna be. Like, it's not sweet. It's just full flavored and a bit weird. If you've seen my hitchhiking series, you're gonna know I have some experience with Calorie Mate and it's not a positive experience. <laughs> I've never seen this one before. I never didn't know it was liquid form until Katie brought it home. I found it in the fridge and I was like, no. So I'm just gonna take a sip and see how bad it is. Oh, it does smell like, oh God, why did you know? How did you do that? It smells, it smells, it smells like, it's just it like smells you. like, like, like stale Lucky Charms. Ugh. No. Oh God. Yeah, I mean it's it's authentic to the crusty little. Oh God, the and the undertaste of that, it tastes like licking a penny, like that's what it tastes like. Ugh. Did you just take a sip, or did you just get what's in the little crevice? I took a sip. Oh. I took a sip. <laughs> Yo, this is worse than the the bars. This actually has flavor. Like the bars are just like eating chalk, kind of. This is just dreadful. Why are somebody in a factory like, yeah, we're going to mix these chemicals together and we're going to come up with this and then we're going to put it in a can and sell it and then suckers are going to buy it. <laughs> I had Lewis buy it for me. <laughs> in our hotel here, this guy is right outside our bedroom door. I guess that's a cricket. It's kind of weird looking. After reading the bus schedule incorrectly and then reading it correctly, we are on the right path to getting up the mountain. We're waiting here for like 10 minutes for the bus to get here. <laughs> that little car shouldn't be making that much noise. <laughs> um, uh, the uh, bus will take us to a ropeway and then from there, hopefully the day is beautiful and interesting and we get to see as much as possible of Mount Chaosu. Chaosu. A little perk of having a robot vacuum cleaner is when you're on a trip going into your app and being like, can you clean the apartment now while I go around? <laughs> we do this every day and he's like, okay, I get to go around, clean it. We get to sit there and watch the map of him moving around our apartment, cleaning everything. Feels really rewarding. <laughs> yeah. So we took a bus that when we got on, there's like nobody on it and then it got crowded. Then we got to a ropeway and it was also crowded. And then we got on a ropeway and it was also crowded. And now we're here at the mountain and I'm thinking to myself, you know, we tried to get out of the city and it's more crowded here. 
Um, I, I don't think that's necessarily true. There's probably equal amounts of people, or at least it feels the same density of people. Um, but here we can spread out pretty far and uh, we're gonna get away from the crowds. We're actually taking a hike today that will take us up two peaks of two different mountains, and I think a lot of people are just gonna go to that first peak and turn around and come back. So I'm hoping that the crowds will thin out upon the second peak. And uh, this even, is a pretty good start to yeah, the day. Yeah, I mean, like even with the crowds, like, <laughs> it's not too bad. I wish you could turn around and there was like a bunch of people just staring, <laughs> um, but there's nobody really over there that cares. <laughs> Hiking maps are awesome. Like, they want you to know how long things are gonna take, like changes in elevation in some ways. Like, there's just more information than other maps. So let's have a look. Right now, we're currently here at this dot. That's the top of the ropeway. This represents the ropeway. We just got off. We're gonna walk 50 minutes up to the active volcano, Cha Usu, and then we're gonna go from there another 30 minutes to this little hut. I don't really know what this hut has anything to do with because there's no bathroom there. I feel like there should be a bathroom there, but there's not a bathroom there. Then we're gonna do another 50 minutes. This is the peak of Asahi, uh, Mount Asahi. And then 30 minutes back down, that, that tells me there's a pretty big incline there. And then we're gonna be taking this little road down to here and probably grabbing lunch and going pee there. Um, the route is supposed to take about three and a half hours. So by the time we get there, Bet you I gotta go pee. Action shot. <laughs> so it's not that easy to be honest, it's slippery. Yeah, it's a very small rocks that are crumbly and they want to go down the hill. Doesn't matter if they're taking you with them or not. <laughs> This looks about maybe five, five ten, ten minutes. minutes. Yeah, Can't it's be. definitely what the hiking map said. I'd love to see a hiking map of uh, the Scotland mountain. It just says five ten minutes on it. That's it. <laughs> yeah, it's a definite like uh, squiggle before it, like <laughs> that little squiggle that says approximately. It's a till day. That's what I told you, right? <laughs> Are you finding the mass to be kind of obnoxious to hike in? I feel the air is a lot drier up here and my nose hurts. Like, up in here hurts. Hmm. Uh, I don't know what it is. No, I feel like I can't change anything about it. Because I need to breathe. You need a new schnoz. <laughs> yeah. We have reached the top of the first peak. And like Katie had said earlier, there's a lot of people up here. <laughs> it's because yesterday was a rainy day. Today's a three day weekend. And after typhoons like yesterday was, the weather is notoriously beautiful. And that's what we're seeing today. Uh, there's actually a word for that, typhu ika, which means like the beautiful weather after a typhoon. So we're enjoying that. And so are a lot of other people up here. And I don't mention that because I feel like entitled to have this to myself or whatever. It's fine, this is just part of the experience. But once the path gets a little more narrow, you are waiting a lot for people to pass, go up and down and stuff like that. It's just a factor of what has happened. We had mentioned earlier that this peak that we're on is called Cha Usu. And I was like, that's kind of a strange sounding word. It doesn't sound Japanese to me, which is ridiculous because after I looked up what it means, I'd never heard it before. It's like a special type of bowl that they use to grind tea. It's like probably the most Japanese thing I've ever seen. And I wonder why this is named that, if it's because of the color, because sometimes they use like the, the, the chairo is like a color, like a brownish color. It's like tea color basically. And some of the ground could be like that, but it could also be that maybe a portion of this mountain is shaped like that bowl and that is the reason that they have adopted that name or it could just be you know they had come up with a sound and then applied random kanji to it that happens sometimes too <laughs> there's not really any purpose for it um but we do have one more we have one more peak that we're gonna head to it's not that late right now it only didn't take us very long to come up there maybe i don't know what's your guess 11 o'clock 11.15. 11.13. Wow, very good. But you overguessed, so I won by Price is Right rules. Yeah, that's great for you. Everybody good. knows that I am more on point. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, the views up here are beautiful. It's been a really cool hike and the textures of the hill, it's been like nine or 10 years since we did it, but it sort of reminds me of Fuji. And maybe that's because of the volcanic aspect of both of the mountains, but just some of that loose rock and then you get to bigger boulders and you're using your hands to climb up certain areas and stuff. Just the experience is very much like what I recall Fuji being, only not nearly as intense as Fuji because the distance is vastly, vastly lower. I think a sign over there I said, it said it was 1,915 meters. I think I got that right. So that's how many meters up we are. But of course we took a bus, a bunch of it, and then a ropeway and et cetera, et cetera. We hiked like, I don't know, 10 feet or something. It was like five, 10 minutes. <laughs> Everybody's like scrambling around to see the interesting bits up here. Like there's a little stand that tells you how high you are and says the name of the mountain. Everybody wants a picture with that. There's a gigantic mountain of rocks in one area. And then there's a little shrine that's up at the top of the mountain. But then there's this inscribed rock on the ground that's obviously from the beginning of time. Centuries <laughs> ago, and people just step on it. No one cares. So just like Eric said, we're at the first peak of this uh, little adventure we're going on today. That is the second peak. That is Mount Asahi. So we're heading over there. 10, 15 minutes? Yeah, definitely. It's a 10, 15 minuter. I know we've upped it, but that definitely shows how much we don't know how long it's going to take. Um, I, I think that it's supposed to be like 50 minutes to a particular point and then another 50 minutes. So maybe about 10-15 minutes. <laughs> so it's down to there. Enhance. While you're on it, there isn't much evidence that Mount Chaosu is a volcanic mountain. You see remnants in the colors of what you're seeing, but you don't really feel like you're standing on an active volcanic thing. It just feels like any other bit of ground. But we just saw one of the little uh, sulfur pipes coming up from down below that is sending out steam. And I thought we'd be seeing a little bit more of that in this area, just based on pictures I saw on the internet, but the internet is a lie. Everything on the internet is a lie. Nothing looks like the internet. Um, so this is what it really looks like. It's just a little... People are watching this on the internet. It's, this is the truth. <laughs> no fancy lenses. <laughs> We've come down the peak and we're headed up our second peak and I've noticed that even though our elevation didn't change dramatically, there's a lot more foliage here on this peak than there is in the other one, or at least more substantial plant growth. And it makes me wonder if that's because this peak is more stable, it doesn't have landslides as much, or hasn't erupted as recently. I have no idea how long it's been since they've erupted. but. Um, yeah, it's just the other one was more barren. Like I said, it was more like Fuji. This is more like, you know, normal nature stuff. We're basically working our way across the spine between the two hills. Hills. <laughs> I feel more like mountains. And we have gotten to the point where the up slope has gotten pretty steep on this one. To the point of where this is looking like this might be some like using your hands to climb up things again. Uh, yeah. it's a pretty... Yeah, holding on to the, the rope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a rope people are using, you're right. But it's a pretty, it's a pretty steep incline we've hit. But it doesn't look like it goes on too far, maybe just like 5-10 minutes. So I think we'll be alright. I've never really sorted how to show how steep something is on camera. It's really hard to express in like a 2D platform. Maybe this can help show you kind of the incline if I take this like this. And then I show you, that's kind of what reality is. And then mix that in with my huffing and a puffing. <laughs> the mask, man. The mask really got me there. Nobody's wearing it now. Yeah. This, this, is, this is past the point of masking. Yeah, everybody has taken their masks off. And I think, I mean, partially it's just like, uh, The crowd has thinned out and the effort has maxed up on, on this terrain. No doubt about that. Come back here. 
Oh, wrong way. <laughs> gambate harder. <laughs> gambate harder. I don't think I have to gambate harder because that's just tuck and roll, man. <laughs> it's just tuck oh, and yeah. roll. Oh <laughs> yeah, that's pretty disastrous. <laughs> How are you feeling about that chain? Uh, chain is still strong, but a bit wobbly. I still trust it. <laughs> this looks easier. I don't know if you're supposed to be on that side of the chain. <laughs> I think you can be on either side of the chain. Chain's not my boss. <laughs> Making this mountain my bitch. <laughs> Yeah, this is like hand stuff to a certain degree. <laughs> this is more intense than I thought it would be, but I like it. You in for that rest? Yeah, let's have a rest. <laughs> and then are you in for the rest? Oh, uh, oh yes, yes, that's, that seems like nothing. <laughs> but I, I don't mind taking a little break, getting some senbe in my belly and been doing that. You really are covered in bugs. Yeah. That's impressive. Oh, anywho, um, we've gotten to the top of Asahi uh, Dake, Mount Asahi, and the last bit was not as challenging as I thought it was going to be. Um, definitely coming up to the midpoint was the most challenging, um, but t the most rewarding because <laughs> it, it was gorgeous. Like, even the something is biting me. Yeah, these little bugs are gnarly, they man. They are biters, wow. Um, so, I lost my train of thought because I got bit. <laughs> the Tori is uh, very cute here. Uh, we didn't expect that coming up. And you can see the ropeway that we rode up. And you can also see the other mountain and the hut that we were at earlier. Like you can see everything that we've done today. It feels like a very culminating moment. I think it's because of my white shirt, but I'm like covered in bugs. <laughs> like they're on my glasses and they're like climbing all over my face. There's a guy right over here. I don't know what the deal is, but they seem to be really attracted to me, and it's possible. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe if I pay... Is this, is this the bug? Is this the thing? I think if you put the money there, maybe they're less likely to attack you. Oh, Did it work? There's no bug. I don't see any more bugs. <laughs> oh, no, that, no, never mind. Yeah. No. It doesn't, it, they don't care about money. This little peak is a lot smaller and a lot fewer people come over here, but it feels essentially about the same level of congestion. <laughs> so you can see behind me there's quite a few people, but the view is pretty dope. I think it's a cooler view from over here. I'm glad we put in the effort to come over to this side. And the hiking was totally different. It was like a different style. And I think that that's got something to do for itself as well. Like that has, there's purpose for that. Like it didn't feel like it was just the same grind. We got to have like different flavors of different styles of hiking. It made this aspect of it definitely worth doing. But um, we're trying to head back down the mountain now because we're hoping to get to a restaurant before it closes at four o'clock so that we don't have to starve tonight. <laughs> All right, we are fully back down to the mountain hut from Asahi Dake. Which is, which one of those? Do you know, oh, it's this. It's, it's the one I can see a person on This it. one, right? Yeah. Mofo, can't I see. can't tell what you're looking at. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so we come um, back. Yeah, so we're back at the hut. Now it's all the way down to the food. What's cool um, about that is that it's a separate path. We haven't been this way. We're not just doing an up and down return. We're doing yes. a bit of a loop. Oh, and I am in the loop. I hate the back and forth. I, I feel that it's no fun. But then again, you see things you didn't see on the way up. So there's that, but I like the loop. Are you trying to blind me? What are you doing? <laughs> just want to show the loop. <laughs> I don't think that's true. <laughs> Terrain has changed yet again as we descend. This is kind of the area that we crossed over with the ropeway earlier and we're skipping the ropeway on the way back down because down is easy. So we're descending down through the forest 
and this is like real trees and stuff not just like little foliage on the side of the road or whatever it's kind of nice because it's nice to be in the shade and it's kind of cool like it lowers the temperature being around all the trees and everything like that so uh it's been a pretty easy stroll back down i don't think we have too much further to go you have to take your hands out of your pockets i think it's really important and i want everyone to know that when you're walking hands out of your pockets Eric, I don't like the candy nuts, okay? I just want to let you know, don't like the candy nuts. The uh, cashews and macadamia nuts, they're too candy for me. I like the walnuts and the almonds. The walnuts taste bitter. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's like, a challenge. Like, they've got a dirty taste to them. I'll take all the macadamia nuts. Mac I can't say that word. I'm not going to pretend I know I say it. Can you say it? Oh, I'm saying it now? Yeah. Okay, macadamia. Macadamia? Say it again? Macadamia. Macadamia? <laughs> Macadamia. 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 There you go. Macadamia. Okay. I wow. Win. <laughs> Teaching English. <laughs> it's like Hawaiian or something. <laughs> Good point. Come here, come here. Macadamia. Macadamia. Maybe there's a line for the food. <laughs> Maybe there's just a bear down there. <laughs> <laughs> With a microwave. Like <laughs> we have found our way back to basically the bottom of the mountain. And there's a little kind of like souvenir hut. And they have food. And this is probably the only chance we're going to have to have a meal that isn't convenience store snacks. So we thought we would hit this up. <laughs> we might want to look for more snacks here before we go home. Yeah, it's possibly because a good idea. Because we're going to get home and around about 8 o'clock we're still going to get, get hungry again. And we have one cup noodle <laughs> and a calorie made. Uh, and I've got an onigiri. We're and fine. an onigiri. Yeah, we're going to be great. Katie has got a udon. And that's pretty common for like hiking stuff. Yeah. Udon and soba and stuff. And hers is a mountain, like the mountain vegetable variety basically. But I don't know what this is. Yeah, I don't know what vegetable it is either. Is it global? Mm, whatever it is, it's really flavorful. Yeah. Kind of like friend of asparagus, but like zesty friend of asparagus. Oh wow. Mm. The texture is really good too. Mm -hmm. Like it's like a like perfect combination of. Happy with my order so far. Firm and yeah, I was gonna order that, and uh, then she was like, "I'm getting this thing." <laughs> I was like, "I'll just get some gyudon then." Because you're right. Like udon is that's mountain food. Udon really is mountain is. food, and so I I couldn't tell myself no. This is a um, this is just a gyudon, which is a pretty common like Japanese fast food snack. If you've never been to Japan, they have a lot of chains that would have this type of food. And this looks like this looks pretty good, like it was homely made. You know what I mean? I'm gonna hit one of those onions. Can I try one of your onions? Mmm, -hmm. mm. it's rich. Oh yeah. With a lot of flavor in it. Mm. Oh dang. Now the lady that delivered this was like pretty war. I have a feeling she might have cooked it too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, so this is just beef, thin sliced beef with onions and um, some vegetables, and then on top of rice, and that's just how this works. Now, this is had, the same thing you'd get at Yoshinoya. Yeah. Uh, this is a different caliber. This is mm. better than what you would get at Yoshinoya. Yes, it's I actually am. really good. Yeah. Um, the only thing is that it's way more expensive. This is 1,100, uh, 1,000 yen. Mm. This is like borderline ten dollars, and it comes with a little soup and some like pickled stuffs on the sides. Mm, pickled stuffs. But like this dish at Yoshino, it would be like six hundred yen or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, this set. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you're paying a premium to get it on the side of a mountain and made by this old lady. How's the rice? That's one of the things that scares me about getting rice stuff now. It's not very good. The rice is not. Mm. Yeah, but the, the but shorter grains than I can even imagine. Yeah, but Why are they the, so short? the toppings. Mm. That's what you're here for. Yeah. <laughs> Would you have a noodle disaster? Maybe you'll see it when you watch the footage. <laughs> call that a fritter. There's a real fritter going on up there. There's like four dogs that just met each other and like every person that's involved no longer cares about the, the normal process of things. Like I gotta skirt dogs and people who are just obsessed with each other. <laughs> Quite a fritter. Did you get some noodles? Yeah, and this is this is one of my favorite brands. Oh, nice. And you recently ate this uh, 
this uh, miso, um, rich miso flavor, mm. and uh, I never got to eat it. So if I eat it tonight, then I'll feel pretty good. But it feels like I'm cheating on my nudes, man. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> riding the bus to the hotel yesterday, Eric got kind of this like deja vu sort of feeling like I've been here before, I've seen some of this stuff before and I completely was like, nope, never seen any of this shit before, mm -mm, all new. And turns out, yeah, we've been here before and we went to a suspension bridge while touring this area. I don't even know why we were here. I know we went to an alpaca farm. Yep, you're getting it. <laughs> Fluffy. <laughs> Keep talking to her. She's really fluffy. Wow. It's like impossibly cute. Mommy, kawaii. It was rainy that day, and then we came to this suspension bridge. Am I making it do it? Or is it the wind? I don't know, but it's pretty freaky feeling. I like it. <laughs> we didn't have any food. We were struggling on food that day. I remember you being a grumpy on a suspension bridge. I was definitely grumpy on the suspension bridge. Anywho, um, so now we're gonna go on the opposite side of that suspension bridge, kind of meeting ourselves in the past. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Katie's right. We have 100% been here before. I recognize this sign over here that talks about the windsock and everything, and kind of the walkway to get up here is all very familiar. Uh, I guess I'm sitting here trying to remember, like, we're in Tochigi Prefecture and we're both like, did we film something in Tochigi? We must have, because <laughs> I did, but I don't remember doing a Tochigi, like, Prefecture video. So I don't know what the, the what, what it was about, but we definitely have been here. And I think you're right. I think it was, I think, I think you're right. It was like the, the alpaca thing, right? Yeah. That was the Tochigi, those alpacas were in Tochigi? I'd like to see them again. I think the main aim was the alpacas. So maybe, did we make an alpaca video and a bridge happened? Yeah, I remember I rode down this windy ass road. I remember that and I remember being really hungry and thinking I was gonna throw up because like if your stomach is empty, you've, or at least for me, I feel the, the road harder. What's weird about this is that there's gonna be people watching this video that probably remember better than we do, <laughs> which is such a strange thing. But somebody will have watched like that video like last week or something and they're gonna know every beat and every like spot that happened. And we're sitting here like, did this actually happen or is this the simulation? <laughs> yeah, this is kind of sketchy for real. It's like shaking. This is awesome. Oh gosh. It's like being in a hammock. It's like a really big hammock. Could fit like at least 200 of my friends in here. My eyes are really sensitive to the sun. I'm just gonna put that out there and I'm gonna do this video like this cause can't see any other way. But it's really cool from the bridge we can see the two mountains that we climbed. We climbed two mountains today. Um, I'm feeling pretty victorious and that I get a roller coaster ride for free at the end. So I'm pretty happy right now. <laughs> the suspension bridge is actually like a 30 minute walk from where we're staying. So we don't even have to catch a bus to get back down to where we need to be. We're using the last bit of our sunlight to walk out to like an observation point. This is out through the woods. <laughs> and we're kind of in the direction of that death rock thing that we went by last night that we stumbled upon. The death rock. The de death rock. <laughs> and all day we've been hearing people with bear bells. And there was a sign like earlier in the day that was like, make sure you have a bell for the bears. Oh, your radio, yeah, your radio. <laughs> and like, of course, like I've made this joke a thousand times, so it's probably gonna fall flat, but I'm telling you that's a, that sign was put up by them bears and that's a dinner bell. <laughs> but I was making jokes all day because like bears don't go to the top of volcanoes that don't have any like trees. There's no salmon. There's no reason for bears to go up there except to eat hikers. But now we're kind of in the area where I feel like a bear could happen. <laughs> this is feeling like where a bear might hang out. So I'm either really happy I don't have a bell or I wish I had a bell. <laughs> we tromped through those woods 
And I thought we were gonna get to like an overlook that was like, you know, limited to the people who had put in time to tromp through the woods. Oh, but then... oh I didn't realize that you, <laughs> okay, now I see what you were mentioning. It's a fine overlook, but it's just at a parking lot. Like the people are just driving up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> these like... people didn't work for this view. Yeah. <laughs> and on top of that, you said, uh, this is probably the least impressive of all the views I've seen today. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean it's impressive. high bar kind of. Yeah, but, but yeah. the high bar has been set by the mountains. <laughs> but we still got a trunk to the woods to get back to where we live yep. for the evening. And uh, it's getting dark, even though it doesn't look dark, the woods are getting dark. And I'd like to make it out of here before bears are looking for the last meal. Mm -hmm. Let's kick it. I feel my life. <laughs> I stumbled my words. <laughs> Indeed. How you feeling about another 150 meters? I'm not very excited about it, but at the same time, I just think, well, you're you're only here once, which wasn't true about that suspension bridge. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I'll find myself in these woods once again. This is actually a 300, 300 meters because we're going 150 once way and then oh, yeah, that's back what, up. And that's why I was like, it'll be 150 meters straight back up. Mm. I'm going. <laughs> I don't know if it's worth it considering I haven't gone back up the stairs yet, but this is a good looking waterfall. I mean, like sometimes you got the ones that are just falling straight down and sometimes you got really small ones that are super long, but this one is just like, it screams nature. And I know that waterfalls are nature but it's just picturesque. It's got the right amount of water and green and stones and just looks good. All right, you're back up. Was it worth it? Worth it. Yeah, that was good. And it wasn't too hard. I'm in back. <laughs> just in case anybody's curious, it means East Waterfall. So that implies there are more waterfalls. No doubt, they're all over the place. But I don't know where they are. <laughs> Probably and west of here. If they're not here. in that direction, I don't <laughs> think I'm gonna see them. <laughs> so we've come to a bridge, and it is pretty muddy. <laughs> Let's see how she does. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> so uh this is what i'm gonna try <laughs> if i slip i'm doomed got this expensive camera but i got these long legs so i think i'm all right I'm a winner! <laughs> you see that? See that action? If I was on that show where you gotta go through this, the obstacle course or whatever, I'd be the only one that made it. <laughs> you look real proud of yourself. <laughs> so we've been walking like at least, I knew it was gonna be like 30 to 35 minutes. It feels like 45 minutes. The sun has gone down. I'm, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel that goes to the road. So that, that's good. I feel like we're getting back to civilization without being stuck in the woods because headlamps was on my list of things to bring. Didn't bring them. I looked at him and was like, I want to use our phones. Yeah, we'll just use our phones. <laughs> um, so we turned the corner back in civilization near the Death Rock. And hanging above the Death Rock is this amazing almost full moon. I don't think it's full. I think it's a little bit missing. But it's huge and big and yellow and amazing. And then we came over to this very, very dark shrine. Eric has informed me that Jinja means shrine. <laughs> and boy, will I never remember this. Dude, check this out. Look forward and see how dark it is. Mm -hmm. Now look what the camera sees. Mm. It's a good camera. Yeah, but look. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wow, so this was earlier today? Yeah, this is basically true to life. <laughs> like, what I'm looking at on the screen is about as much as I can make out in real life with my eyeballs. But magic ass technology gets dirty looking, but it's like night vision. 
So we're back in the little town that the Death Rock is at, and if you remember, the Death Rock was part of the story of this nine-tailed fox. And I'd like to point out that literally everything in Japan has a mascot, even the nine-tailed Death Fox, because his name here is QB. And I'm sure there's a dude with a costume somewhere in this town for when the Matsuri happens. <laughs> there are these cool lanterns that just line the side of the road that's like the main drag through the town. And I got looking at it and I was just like, what's this logo on here? And I think what it is, is a really abstract drawing and representation of the nine-tailed fox. Because there's a dot in the middle, which I think is like the fox's body. And then all of these flames coming off of it. And I think the flames are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tails. Uh, I'm impressed with this. This is really dope. We are super tired from the hike. We have got a couple of cup noodles. Got a ton, ton, many cup noodle. Katie's got a different one. <laughs> Me some. I already discussed it. And um, I've got no Ooh, the wasp went up the room. The wa uh, we've got, we had a wasp in the room and we were just hoping he'd leave. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't think, I mean, it's a cup noodle. They're pretty good in Japan. I'm not going to get into a cup noodle review right now just because of how tired we are. They're pretty good in Japan. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty good. I mean, what are you going to say? It's a cup noodle. <laughs> <laughs> but we did realize we don't have any food for tomorrow morning, but Katie has now informed me that there's a 7-Eleven a 20 minute walk away. So and I think that's there's not also a terrible. bakery somewhere near here. Yeah, I have but to is do it, some research But is it opened or is it Corona closed is the question yeah, you have to ask yourself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I am looking at myself in the mirror here, the camera, and I'm looking a little pink. Am I a little pink? I can't tell this light. Yeah, sucks. the light's pretty bad. Maybe yeah. it's just the light. I don't but know. I, I feel like maybe I'm burnt. I found out that sunscreen really does work. I don't think you're going to be able to see very well. But like where my hairline is, that got uh -huh. burnt. And here it's totally fine. Mm -hmm. But I didn't put like sunscreen into my hair. <laughs> so that'll peel and that'll look hot. While you're on it, there isn't much evidence that Mount Chausa. Nope. Got it wrong. Starting over. <laughs> I've been asked to recap the last few minutes. <laughs> and the recap I was given was, Moon was cool, Jinja. Which is the temple behind me. <laughs> it's a shrine. Uh, but you said Jinja! I did! Shrine! Dang it! <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Yeah, you still have this mixed up. There are some zebras on your face. Like on the hot spots. Yeah. Not in here though, right? No. Okay, it should be okay. Cha Usu. These bullet holes is America? <laughs> you mean I have to repeat myself? I don't know what this is. <laughs> what are we doing? This is the end card for the second video where we were in Tochigi where we went up and hiked on the uh, active two, volcano, yeah. the two active volcanoes, and just needed to do the like the pleading for people to help us through different means, such <laughs> as okay, I'm gonna do one. You're gonna do the other. <laughs> go over <laughs> to Patreon. <laughs> I can't, uh, I can't, I can't keep it going for very long, so. <laughs> so, yeah. go ahead. You can head over to Patreon if you want to do, like, um, see other additional things that you don't get to see in our regular videos and other perks and fun things. We do discussion also, videos about all these long videos, so a couple times a month we do, like, a half an hour-ish long, like, chit-chat about the backgrounds of the videos that we put on our main YouTube channel. It's not like we have, like, super-duper exclusive content locked away, but it's just, like, additional little like things and we do a question and answer type stuff over there yeah and then outside of that we've got facebook twitter instagram um you have fun on twitch sometimes and um there's a discord if you hang out on discord there's a link down below with everything else i'm on discord. there but i'm not on there <laughs> katie doesn't internet very much i really don't 
Oh. The other day you were swiping through Reddit, and I was like, so that's what the internet looks like? <laughs> and then I was just like, mm, bored of that. And I just stare off into space. <laughs> like, I'm just fine with whatever is in this direction. I'm kind of envious of you, to be honest. It's weird. Um, and if you can hit the like button on this video if you liked it, and leave bell. comments and ring a bell, bell so that you get bell. Uh, notifications. And then if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And that's the stuff I'm supposed to ask everybody to do so that our channel doesn't sink into the abyss. Help the robots understand how important we are. <laughs> oh, God damn. Oh. My brain is making all the connections, but it's not coming out right. I just told that guy, because it's cheap, you can go forward. <laughs>